Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to SimTech channel in the series of tutorial on STM32 coding for everyone. So if you are just getting started and you are not sure how to actually get coding with programming the STM32 uh, microcontroller, you are on the right place because here we're going to start from scratch, okay? This is why it is called coding for everyone. Now, in this tutorial, we're basically going to have a look at the clock configuration of the STM32 microcontroller. So this is what you get if you create a project for the first time and you click on the IOC option here. It will open this graphical representation of your microcontroller right there. Now, if you are not too familiar on how to get to this point here, please watch my tutorial on installing and creating a new project with the STM32 Cube IDE. Now, when you are here, click on the clock configuration. Those clock configuration here already got some default settings here that you can basically just load into your program because this default configuration is based on the board selection that you already select when you are creating a new project. Okay, I'm using the STM32 Nucleo F334R8 board. Now, you might be using a different one, but uh, believe me, the clock configuration is very much similar, although it will have different values loaded by default, because this one of mine here said that the maximum uh, frequency that I can run this chip here is 72 megahertz. Okay, yours might be different, might be more or less. Now, right now, my board is actually on a default of 64 megahertz. And as you can see, all my peripherals here, they can only run up to a 64 megahertz. So you cannot have your peripheral buses or clock, wherever running at a frequency higher than that. Now, if I have to change this now and set it to 72 megahertz, which is a maximum, Mind you, you cannot set it to higher than this. Now, if I set it to 72, it will have to basically readjust all the settings so that the whole system can run at a clock frequency of 70 Hertz. Now, you can see no solution found using the current selected source. Do you want to use the other source? Then I'm going to say yes. So now it's looking for a possible solution for running on a 72 megahertz there we go now after finding uh, the solution for 72 megahertz clock frequency now you can see that the changes have been affected and all my peripherals have been adjusted to match the high frequency that the chip will be running if you look at the clock configuration diagram here you realize that there are some area that are gray out well this is because you have only selected a few uh, pins that you're actually going to be using. So that basically means some other area that are basically disabled on your system pins here, they're also going to be grayed out here. So you won't have to modify them whatsoever. So you can only modify the clock configuration based on your pre-selected settings here for your pins. Now, this clock configuration diagram is basically very much self-explanatory. So if you want to find out more about this, all you have to do is to basically hover on top of any block. Now, right now, if I hover on the ADC 1.2 prescala here, where I basically get it, say clock divider is not available. To enable it, one of the following RCC models or IPs have to be configured from the pinout tab. So it basically is telling me if I want to have access to basically controlling this, right? All I have to do is basically to enable one of these functions on the pin configuration tab, like what I said earlier. So if I go ahead like this timer one source multiplexer here. So if I go back into my pin out configurations and find the timers, right? So I choose like timer one and enable this timer. And once we enable it, automatically we're going to see that we'll be able to switch and change to whatever frequency we want here on the timer configuration. So let's go ahead and choose a clock source, right? So let's just uh, go easy and say internal clock source, right? So when I select internal clock source, there are some other options that must be selected here. Now, this is basically if you want a PWM frequency and all other things. 
I've got a tutorial out on how to configure the PWM frequency with your STM32. This is basically where you play out, you select your channel and all other things. Now let's head back to the clock configuration and you can see as soon as we enable that uh, timer, we now have this option here available where we can basically change and put uh, whatever value we want to put there for our clock. And once you input it, it will have to also look for a solution for you so that this uh, configuration can be able to load in and work uh, accordingly in your system. Now let's move slightly up here where we've got RTC clock max. Now the RTC clock max is basically the real time clock multiplexer. It's got three uh, input uh, clocks that you can select on. Now this RTC real time clock uh, multiplexer is basically for application where you really want to keep times. If you are writing a script that you need to keep time stamping or you want to manage your event based on the real time clock triggers, you basically will have to enable these uh, features here. Okay, that's going to manage the real time clock for you. And in this multiplexer, as I've said earlier, you've got three options. So the first one here is your HSE, which is your high speed external oscillator. Now, this is not so often used because uh, it, it's really very specific application that will use a high speed external oscillator. Otherwise, uh, most application will be based on your internal uh, high speed frequency. Now you've got a second option here, which is your LSE. That is your low speed external oscillator that you use uh, work based on the 32.7 kilohertz uh, clock frequency oscillators. Now, these uh, crystal oscillators, they really very much, you can find them on almost every microcontroller board. This is an example one, you can see X2 here. That is your external oscillator with a 32.7 kilohertz of frequency. Okay, so if you want to use a real time clock, you're going to be depending on this one to clocking for you. The third option will be the LSIRC. Now, this is really, uh, it depends on application, most application. Okay, if you are just running a simple application, you can also use this because this RC basically mean you're going to have a resistance and a capacitor to basically set your timer for your external clock oscillator. So now this, the accuracy is not the same as having your crystal oscillator running here, right? If you select to use the, the resistor and capacitor, make sure that your resistor and capacitors that you choose, they've got very good tolerances. Otherwise, it's going to have a very low accuracy, right? There are plenty of multiplexer in this clock configuration diagram. Let's look at another one down here, which is MCO source. It's also gray out because it is indeed not being used. Now, this MCO source is basically mean is stand for microcontroller clock output, right? So it basically it's a feature, it's a hardware feature that basically lets you choose, right, which clock you're going to output on your MCU pins once you select it and you are able to use it. Now, as always, you can see that these multiplex have got the tons of uh, options where it can actually select the source of the clock where it's coming from you can choose from a system clock you can choose from lsi uh, hce just as these multiplexer so that's going to be the same story there this feature is mostly reserved for diagnosis or measurement purposes so for the kind of uh, applications that we'll be testing mostly for the peripheral library and other things we won't be using it most of the time right so what else can we look at here now the peripheral clock frequencies they set from here you can indeed also modify them from here because you can see you've got option to type in anything so uh, if you want to change the apb1 timer clock basically just change it let's say we want to put 48 megahertz on that clock it will basically reconfigure uh, your whole uh, clock signal sources so that you can so that it can actually matches what you just have there as you can see it's basically write everything back right let's look at the one last multiplexer before we can close up this tutorial and also guys if you find this tutorial useful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel. That would be highly appreciated. So let's look at the PLL source max, 
right? Also known as the phase locked loop. Now, this phase locked loop is basically a configuration that allows you to select uh, the input source to this PLL circuit here, as you can see. And the PLL circuit is also feeding in a clock source, right, to the system clock multiplexer. And it's also feeding to this timer source multiplexer. So basically, that's what this PLL source max is basically doing there. So this PLL uh, circuit is really a very critical component that's responsible for generating a high frequency clock from a low frequency source. So make sure what you are doing when you're working on that section there. Right, so basically that is it guys for this system uh, clock configurations. And please remember, you must never exceed the 72 megahertz for my particular board. Yours might be different regardless of what you are doing there it must never go above that otherwise your code is not going to work so that is it guys uh, for this tutorial thanks for watching once again and don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next tutorial where we're going to discuss about the stm32 external interrupt so basically the ability to interrupt your processes from an external event so until next time cheers